On November 24th, I was on patrol in the north central area of Washington County, which is five miles west of Maplewood. And at approximately 345, I got a radio call. I had been told that I was to meet a state trooper and a trapper who had been on the ponds and lakes out there looking for areas to set up his trap lines. And he had discovered what he thought was a plastic bag full of body parts. At the time I headed for the area, I was thinking that the guy found a doll or a mannequin because there have been times when we've had calls about a body laying in a ditch that's turned out to be nothing more than a store mannequin. As I drove up, I could see the bag out on the ice, approximately 20, 25 feet. I wanted to get closer, but I had no idea how thick the ice was. I went back to my squad, got my camera out, put my telephoto lens on it so that I could get up close and personal without actually getting on the ice. And at that distance with a telephoto lens, I could clearly see that the plastic bag had been ripped open. I could see hair in what looked like part of a face. And then clearly laying on the ice next to the bag within a few feet was a hand and a foot. And I was 99.9% .9 certain that what we're looking at are real body parts. When it was determined the ice was hard enough to support a human being, we walked out and took some photos from that spot. You see there's a ring on that pin? Yeah. yeah. There's another foot. <laughs> but where's the rest of it? The rest of the torso was not there. Well, this was one of the worst crime scenes that I have been to in my career. It was extremely scary, and there was concern that the person was still out there running around and they could do something like this again. Then, just 24 hours later, a second grisly discovery is made. The next day, a woman walking her dog about two miles east of where the body parts were found, she saw something down an embankment towards a lake. And she thought at first it was just a gunny sack. And when she checked, it was actually a torso of a white female. She was then given over to custody of the Ramsey County Medical Examiner. When the autopsy was performed by the medical examiner's office, I was there, and when I first saw the body parts, it just struck me that that was probably from our victim, Morna Jean Brennan, who had been missing for two weeks. The body had a lot of indentations. It looked like maybe she had been put into a construction site with two by fours and with her body laying in there, it made impressions into her body, and then as it froze, the impressions stayed there. I noticed that where the head was sawed off, you could see there was a very fine razor blade cut, so you could tell that she had her throat slit. The right side of her face was badly bruised, broken jaw, and she had a L-shaped cut on her temple area. My belief is that she was alive when those things happened to her. And the slicing of the throat was the ultimate cause of death. The cuts in her body, removing her head and her hands and her two feet, were very clean cuts. This is a very aggressive, sadistic crime. There were concerns, could this possibly be a hunter? Was it a surgeon? This killer is an angry, and violent man who felt a strong need to overpower this woman. In the autopsy room, looking at the body parts laying on top of the table, I thought, we have to find this guy. <laughs> 